Today we are going to be going over the definitive guide for kicking out villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons. I do hope everybody enjoys this episode and helps you get the villagers that you want in this wonderful game. Now a lot of this information that we're going to be covering is stuff that we've been preaching for pretty much the past month, month and a half. But we have finally got data mined information which backs up all of the things that I've been saying on kicking out villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons and provides us with data points that are very, very useful for targeting specific villagers as well and getting a better understanding of how this process actually works. So all of this stuff we're going to be covering is 100% backed up by data mining and it's been the method that I've been using to kick out villagers for a month and a half and it works. I can kick out pretty much any villager that I want within about 10 minutes. Many of you seen me do it live almost every single day. So hopefully this helps you all out. And without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to take you through an entire process of kicking out a specific villager. Now there are two cooldowns that we're going to be discussing during this process. And the first cooldown is the villager kickout cooldown. We just kicked out a villager today, which is May 26th which means we won't be able to kick out another villager for 15 days. We already knew this was a thing, but now we have 100% confirmation through data mining that it is, in fact, 15 days. And um, so that means we need to skip to 15 days in the future before we can get another Thought Bubble um, to be able to kick a villager out. Now, once we get the Thought Bubble, we're going to move on to the next step, which is the Thought Bubble Transfer Method, which also has a cooldown, and it's very important that you pay attention to this cooldown if you want to kick out villagers quickly. And I've already covered this many times. We're going to cover it once again so you all understand exactly how this works. So we've moved 15 days into the future. Or actually 16 days. Now there is a bunch of math that goes behind the selection process with this. And you can check out Ninji's tweet for this. But if you don't like doing math, long story short at 30 days is going to be your maximum percent chance of a thought bubble landing on a villager so if you're time traveling then just jump 30 days into the future future after you kick a villager out and you'll be at your max percentage chance per day to be able to get a thought bubble but if you're not time traveling then obviously start paying attention after the 15 day mark uh for thought bubbles every single day so from here basically what we need to do is just get a thought bubble to appear. Now, the thought bubble will appear on certain villagers based on your friendship level. Now, I've been saying this for months and people didn't believe me, but now we have uh, definitive proof from data mining. There is a bunch of math that goes behind this as well, but you do need to know your actual friendship level with each villager to be able to do that math. Long story short, with the math is the lower your friendship level with the villager, the higher chance that the bubble that they get is going to be a move out bubble rather than a gift or anything else. So that's pretty self-explanatory. I've known that for months. Um, but regardless, right now, all we got to do is get that thought bubble to appear. And then we can get into the really tricky part of this method, which is to target specific villagers and kick out villagers very, very quickly. So with this whole process, there are a few outliers here that will affect which villager can get the Thought Bubble. If their house is in the process of being moved, they will be excluded from the move out process. If their birthday was within the last seven days or in the next seven days, not 100% clear on which one that is, then they will be excluded from the Thought Bubble process as well. And if they were picked last time and you told them to stay, then they'll be excluded from the next Thought Bubble as well. And theoretically, if they were the most recent to move in, then they will also not get the Thought Bubble right off the bat either. Um, so right now, basically, we're just trying to get the Thought Bubble to actually spawn. Now, you do want to kind of... The way I run my island is I typically don't make friends with any of my villagers. So that way, they all have the same percent chance of getting the Thought Bubble. But there is a couple things that you can do to help this out. Obviously, the villagers that you want to leave will need to have the lowest level of friendship. And then you can increase your friendship with other villagers. So that way, when it lands on them, they're probably going to want to give you a gift rather than actually wanting to leave. But obviously, even your most friendly villagers can choose to leave as well. Um, but you're going to have a higher chance of a villager wanting to leave with that thought bubble if they have lower friendship. 
And there's a couple ways that you can lower friendship purposefully to help you with this process as well. And we're going to get into that right now. So there is really only two ways that you can really effectively get rid of or lower your friendship with a villager. The first one is going to be pushing them around or hitting them with a bug net until they get upset. Specifically a bug net, not any other tools. So once they get upset, you will lower your friendship by three points with them. So continuously doing this every day is going to lower your friendship with them until they are eventually going to be at the lowest tier of friendship and any thought bubble that they get will be them wanting to move out. The next method was if you are in the gifting stage of friendship with a villager, you can gift them trash or a spoiled turnip, and that will give you negative two points uh, on friendship. And if it happens to be their birthday, you can also give them trash and it will be negative five points on their friendship. Now the friendship scale goes from obviously zero all the way up to 200 plus points. So if you're super friendly with a villager, you're going to have a lot of work to lower them all the way down. But still, if you max out friendship with villagers as well, then they're going to start wanting to leave too because the game wants you to cycle in new villagers. So you can either fully decrease their points or fully increase their points to help the move out process. So this is what I recommend doing if you're a time traveler in Animal Crossing New Horizons and you want to kick out villagers very quickly. Now we have already time traveled 30 days forward in time to get our maximum percent chance of acquiring a thought bubble on a villager. So what we're going to do from here, just so that we don't have to time travel too forward in the future, um, we're going to go ahead and go back into May now and we're going to maintain that 30% or that, that maximum of 30 days chance already. So we're just going to time travel back to the normal day that it is right now. And then we're just going to push forward one day at a time until a thought bubble appears. And wham bam, thank you ma'am, there is our first thought bubble. But now, since we have actually been friending our villagers on this island, there is a chance that this could be Cube wanting to give us a present. If I was running this how I used to run my island, this thought bubble could be nothing but him wanting to leave, which is why I recommend keeping all of your villagers at the lowest tier of friendship until you get all of the villagers that you actually want and then start friending everybody. Uh, but regardless, I know everybody's not going to play that way. So what I recommend doing with this thought bubble is checking to see what it is. So this is pretty sure Cube wanting to leave. He wants to run an idea by us and thinking about moving away. Now we don't want to kick out Cube. So what you need to do at this point in time, so that way you do not trigger the second cooldown in this process, which is the move out thought bubble. The devs don't want you to always have to deal with your villagers wanting to move out. So there is a five day hard cooldown on the villager move out thought bubble. So it's very important that if you want to be very effective with kicking out villagers, regardless if you're time traveling or not, and especially if you're not time traveling, to make sure to close the game before finishing the conversation. Now, if you're not time traveling, at this point in time, you would go ahead and just reboot the game and do not finish the conversation with that villager at any point in time during that day. And the next day, it has a chance of moving to a new villager. Now, you just want to repeat that process if you're not time traveling until it lands on the one that you do want to kick out. But since we are time traveling, I'm going to show how this works right now. We're going to push forward a day. And we're going to see who the Thought Bubble is on the next day. Now, the Thought Bubble doesn't have a 100% chance of respawning every single day. Sometimes it might go a day without respawning. But make sure you are only moving forward one day at a time. And make sure the time is also set to a time of the day where that villager you actually want to kick out is outside. If you're time traveling and you're not setting the time of day to a time when that villager is outside, you're going to struggle with this. So make sure that... You move one day at a time once you get the thought bubble process processing and you're at a time of the day when they are actually outside. Now, if you would just hate a villager and you want to replace them with everybody during this process, you're going to want to pay attention to campsite visitors just like this. I do have an entire guide on how to manipulate the campsite to get any single villager you want using in-game mechanics. And no, there's no cheating involved. It's a really cool system on how the campsite works. If you want to check that out, make sure to... I'll leave a link in the description of this video, as well as a card on the top right corner. Well, today our Thought Bubble has transferred over to Pico. 
Now, I would really like to get it onto Ike or to Lolly. And I think we got a new campsite visitor because I had to open plot. But since I started, oh my god, we got Big Top <laughs> as our one that just randomly moved in. Um, so some people encounter issues where it just doesn't seem to transfer onto the villager. Now, some things that I recommend doing is you can try pushing the villagers if you want and talking to them. Sometimes triggering a conversation seems to help out a little bit. But we know from data mining that it is just a random chance. Um, and the, the chance is calculated by your friendship levels with them. So lower friendship levels should improve your chance, which means pushing them around is technically going to be your best bet. Um, but regardless, we got it on Pico. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and continue the process. Now, when you are doing this with time traveling, a lot of people like to fill the comments with like, don't save when you're doing this process. Don't listen to the people in the comments. Listen to what I am telling you. I do this every single day, multiple times a day. I've kicked out probably about 200 villagers. When you push forward the day, make sure you save and close. You know, I just realized that we didn't actually want to keep Pico on the island anymore because we've already got her on the Southern Hemisphere Island. So we totally could have kicked her out there and I completely forgot she was one of the villagers that we were trying to keep queued up for kicking them out. But I've kind of fallen in love with her, so I'm okay with keeping her on the island for a little bit longer. Um, but regardless, we gotta find our next thought bubble. The universe seems to want to take all of my penguins away from me today, and it's, uh, making me feel a little sad. Oh my god, finally Ike is out of here. The game stopped wanting to take our penguins away, and that's all you really need to do, is just every day check the bubbles until it lands on the villager that you want it to actually be on, which is for us, Ike, we want to get rid of Ike. And now Ike is going to leave. So basically, just if you really want to help control this a little bit more, is make sure that the villagers that you want to leave are at the lowest friendship possible. That's not going to mean that it's going to guarantee it landing on them, but it is going to improve your chances of it landing on them. Now at this point in time, we're just going to say I'll be cheering you on. Now, once you do this, the next day, they're going to be in boxes, which means that you can have somebody come and actually pick them up if they want them. And then the day after that, when they fully move out, is when you can finally start hunting for new villagers. And I've got another extra trick up my sleeve for you as well. Now, I know people are probably going to ask, if you are time traveling, you can go back in time and the villager will still be kicked out. So what I like to do is before they fully move out, I will move back in time. Right now, we've got Ike in boxes, and it is currently the 25th. So basically, what you would do is, today is the 26th. Um, so what you would do to do this properly is you would move back to the 24th, which is two days before the current day that it is. Then you would move forward in time, put them in boxes. And then you'd move forward in time one more day, which would be the 26th for us, so that we're on our current day. And then that way, when Ike fully moves out, it will be the current date and time again. So this takes us to the final tip of the video. There's nothing more frustrating in this game than spending all this time and a villager moves into an empty spot on your island. This is the most frustrating thing in the game. This is the only thing I really recommend time traveling for, other than kicking out villagers. And that's to prevent this from happening, because it is really, really frustrating. Now, there's two things that you could do to prevent this. You can have zero friends, because the way the game works is when a friend kicks out a villager, they're going to move into a friend's island. Or, what you can do is, say you spend eight hours looking for a villager on the day you kick somebody out. So it would be like nine o'clock at night, let's say. What you would need to do is immediately completely close the game. Completely close it. Now, before you open the game again, that you wake up and it's the 27th, or the next time you play, it's going to be the 27th. Before you start the game again, kick it back to the 26th. As long as you are within the same day that you kicked out a villager and you haven't launched the game in a future date, that plot will remain open until you fill it. You can do this for 10 days in a row. Say you only have an hour a day to search for uh, a villager. Every day before you log in, just kick it back to May 26th, which is my kickout day. And you can do this as many days in a row as you want 
and it won't hurt your game at all. The only thing that'll happen is you might spoil your turnips. Uh, but this will prevent a major annoyance in the game from happening to you, and I highly recommend it. Now that is all for today's video. I hope it helps you out. Definitely make sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends and family uh, to help them get all the villagers that they could want in Animal Crossing. But there are no other secrets to this. There's a maximum chance at 30 days, so if you're time traveling, just skip out 30 days and then go from there one day at a time or two days at a time, whatever floats your boat. Make sure that you don't activate that Thought Bubble cooldown, and you should be able to kick out villagers extremely easy. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.